Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to God. Good morning, everyone. And uh, good morning to all the listeners present or uh, online listeners. We welcome you in this session of God's Word. Today's Word uh, will take us through sanctification. It is good to be sanctified, to have a holy life, and to have a fellowship with God. Uh, in order to do that, we need the inspirational word of God so that uh, we may be equipped for good works. Now, welcome you all. Before we start, we want to just uh, to speak a few words of a prayer. Dear have, uh, Heavenly Father, we are so amazed, so thankful for your grace, your grace upon us. You loved us more than we can express with uh, mortal lips. You gave us life and you sustain us. Whenever we lay down, whenever we wake up, it is a testimony because you watch over us, you loved us, and you bestowed all blessings, physical blessings and spiritual blessings also, which is the word of God, the word of encouragement, the word showing us the way, the truth, and the life. We come humbly before you, asking mercy upon our lives, asking forgiveness uh, on everything we offend you, our mostly, most high God. We ask you to forgive us all our missteps, all of our iniquities, but remember us in your holiness and apply your holiness to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because we need you. We need you in our journey. We need you in our daily living. We need you in all the time we will have here. We need you. Every hour, every minute, every second, every day, every year, in the name of Jesus. So welcome, dear God, and uh, break to us the bread of life, the bread of strength, so that we may be fully tied and equipped for good works. In the name of Jesus Christ. We prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. As we said, we can go over sanctification. Sanctification is uh, something we need in our lives so that we may please unto God. And God also is expecting us to please Him, to please Him through faith, because whenever we walk by faith, we, we please God. Now, in order then to get this faith, we need also to speak about sanctification, or we need sanctification in our lives, and that sanctification is uh, like the hand to grab whatever we need in God by faith and apply it to us. That's the only way. Because the Bible says 
without sanctification, no one cannot see God even. See now, the sanctification is the way, and we will go through sanctification in details so that we may conclude at last how we have to be, how we have to live, how we have to please unto God. Now, before we start, we will read the Word of God, which is in, uh, in uh, the book of uh, Peter, Second Peter, Second Peter, Second uh, Peter. chapter 3 and 11. It says, Seeing then that all these uh, things shall be dissolved, what manner of a person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and uh, godliness? Hallelujah. Apostle Peter, I don't want to delay too much uh, on uh, apostles because I have a special, uh, special revelation on each apostle of Jesus Christ. I wrote the book uh, on the Apostle James, uh, a big book of uh, even five, uh, almost five. Uh, hundred pages so you can see that uh, there is a yes inspiration on uh, anyone who is the uh, apostle uh, and uh, Peter also we can uh, speak little about him and uh, go just in deep how he was uh, teaching how sanctified he was, and how he was calling people to sanctification in order to be spared uh, in the time of wrath. Because God manifested, manifested the wrath sometimes along the time, we can see in the time of uh, Noah where God decided to wipe away all the seed of uh, men because they corrupted themselves. They acted in violence and uh, they, they made themselves uh, filthy because of a uh, women there was no other resolution for God but to wipe all the living creature, including, including men, uh, and to wipe it away in order to spare one single family, which was Noah's. Noah and his family who found favor before God and the God made them seed the seed just to to multiply to replenish and to to feed up the surface earth again so it was a serious with God to decide to search and uh, the reason was nothing else it is because people kept going into sin, sinning day and night, becoming bad and bad more, becoming violent, and doing all manners of sins. And among those sins, they were even worshipping idols. And when uh, there is a idol worship connection, 
there is something behind it that Satan, who had the desire to be worshipped like a god, but uh, which desire God did not fulfill. Because God said, I am God, there is none like me, and my glory shall not give to someone else. Hallelujah. Then all glory to God, all honor to God, all worship to God. Then when you see uh, people worshiping idols, that's a desire of Satan who wanted to be worshipped, but he didn't be satisfied because God cannot break his word. And because of that even idea, God made him to fall. And he is falling even today. And he will be keeping falling until the total destruction. Now today we are going to say about the sanctification. Sanctification is something good we have to be. All of us children of God. And uh, here Apostle Peter was uh, saying about new earth, new heaven. New earth, new heaven. If you see second uh, epistle of Peter, chapter 3, he was uh, saying new heaven, new earth. Because first heaven, first earth will be renewed, will be sanctified by fire, will pass through finance trial, but it will not be destroyed. It will not be destroyed. The earth, the heaven will not be destroyed, but all ungodly things will be destroyed. Satan himself will be destroyed. Demons will be destroyed. Sickness will be destroyed. All of things caused by sin will be destroyed. But whatever God made by his word, which is the earth and the heaven, will stay, will be steadfast forever because God has the way to purify. We have this example, the gold. In order to purify the gold, you put it into the fire, the furnace, and uh, that purification will take dross out, will take uh, all all gold like outside every dross will be taken out but that gold it will shine more and more because it is passing through sanctification it is the same way to us believers us who believe in Jesus Christ this body, which is a symbol of the earth, we know that uh, the body has uh, the same material like the earth have, because we have been formed from the dust of the earth. Whatever material the earth has, we do have it. Our bodies are constituted by hydrogen, by ions and uh, um, the uh, I go in chemistry I'm sorry uh, iron calcium petroleum zinc manganese cobalt vitamins and so on all of those things 
are the constitute of the body. And those things also, they are constitute of uh, the earth. The dust is made of those things. The molecules are the same. The hydrogen, earthly hydrogen and the uh, bodily hydrogen, they are the same. The oxygen, we are, uh, we are uh, uh, breathing is from the expression of uh, the leaves, uh, leaves of trees. They give carbon, the, 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 the breathe carbon and they, they give oxygen and uh, we get oxygen and whenever we give back we give carbon carbon i don't know if uh, i speak it uh, right sometimes uh, french and uh, english get mess mixed up i'm sorry about that so we are that chain of people and uh, that chain of things completing each other we complete the earth and the, the earth also complete us. We have the same elements in our making. The elements making the dust, the earth, they are the same element making the body, this precious body which God gave to us. But now God had the purpose for us to live. That purpose was uh, to be carrier of untold treasure of uh, God himself. God needs us. God gave to us all. When God uh, created all, the creature, almost all, the creature of the, the earth, God saw that they are good. And uh, he said that uh, it is not enough if they don't have someone to dominate over them. And God now thought of a man. And he began now to plan the eternal plan of God, Jehovah. And he said, now let us form a man into our own similitude so that he may rule, dominate and uh, rule the work that I have done. The Bible says heavens are God's but the earth he has given to the children of men which is to say that this is our property. But if we have uh, given this treasure, yes, it is treasure from God, but also we have some direction, directions uh, to, to do in order to rule properly, in order to keep going uh, through the will of God so that we may not coalesced with our maker. And uh, those uh, plans God gave to us was to be the children of God like Adam was before the fall. Before the fall, Adam was 100% son of God. He was receiving from God he was holy like God was, and he was doing the will of God. And God trusted him so much until he gave him all the creation he created. And he began to tell him, now call them their name, their proper names. Hallelujah. It was a such honor because God, after 
doing the work of uh, creating a man, he didn't even uh, he didn't even uh, desire again to mingle himself with the affair of calling what he created the man. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, he created the heavens. He created also the earth. The earth now he gave it to the Adam and I said now rule and uh, dominate and uh, call whatever is passing before you, call them by name. The first work of Adam was classification. He was classifying all the works of God by calling by name each work of God. Animals, vegetables, vegetations, and uh, uh, and uh, birds of the air, and also fish of the seas, the seas and everything therein. Adam was the one to call the name for all of those. You see now that he had such a, a work to do and he was uh, highly respected because he was uh, working uh, in harmony with God. Now Adam did whatever uh, God was uh, directing him because he had the spirit of Christ inside of him which was enabling him to do the work. And uh, that... Uh, that uh, uh, spirit, that inner capacity, that Christ who was dwelling in him, it is the nature of God himself. Because God gave uh, of his spirit and gave to Adam so that he may uh, do the work. And uh, God is still unchanged. He is doing the same. Because he paved the way for us to be sanctified. He sent Jesus Christ here on earth so that we may be sanctified. And Jesus Christ did two phases of his ministration. Phase number one, he sanctified us through the word of God, through the word which is Christ. Jesus Christ sanctified uh, his uh, disciples and all of us through the word because of what it is the word which sanctifies hallelujah and the word also it is like equipment uh, God gave to us that equipment I can say it is all to us in God's word we have a protection hallelujah but in order to be protected, you have to know that word pertaining to protection. Hallelujah. In the word, we have the power of sin forgiveness. But in order to know how uh, the sin can be forgiven, we have to receive that word. Now, the word is like a tool in God's hands or equipment he, give, uh, he gives to us in order to live according to his perfect will. Hallelujah. That's the way it is. Now, God kept this fellowship with man. And Jesus Christ also provided the word of God. He was the word of God. And he taught people about sanctification. In those sanctification, Jesus Christ said many things. He said, it is said, you will love your friend but hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemy and do good also to them, those who do you harm. Because in doing so, you will be like a uh, applying burning ch calls into their chest. 
they will be seeing how you reply good for evil and they will glorify God. Hallelujah. That's how Jesus Christ was saying. Do uh it is said love your friend and hate your enemy but may I say love even your enemies hallelujah be holy like I am holy all of those words were to equip people were to equip uh the generation of God's word so that they may be strong and uh, strong spiritually. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was showing all of those words in order to lead those disciples, even us, to the proper way of uh, sanctification. Live peacefully with everyone. Do good to everyone because God also does good to good and evil also. When the sun is rising, it is reason for the good and evil. God do, do not care. When the rain is falling, it is falling type of blessing. It is falling for good and evil. Hallelujah. He was showing people how to live in harmony with God and in harmony also uh, between each other. Jesus Christ said, Now I want to teach you some important lesson. Let your word be few. Let your word be ya, yeah, ya, yeah, and nay, nay. Ya, yeah, yes, yes, no, no. Because whatever come, uh, whatever adds up is from evil. God or Jesus never trusted many words. There is someone who said, in many words, there is too many transgressions. That's Solomon in Pro Proverbs. In many words, there are many transgressions. Why? Yes, in words, there are flaws. But if you come to the principle of yes, yes, no, no, now you, you become brief and they speak the truth. If they ask you, oh, how about this? You say, yes, I know it. No, I don't know it. That's enough. It is the longest answer and it is the sure, surest answer also, but also it is brief. There is not too much word. But if you begin to explain, if you begin to uh, present the reasons, if you begin to add up, in those things, the evil can come e easily. Remember, he is like a lion, he is a seducer. Whenever a man gives a breach, he follows and he gets in. But uh, Jesus Christ said, let your word be few. Let your word be yes, yes, no, no, because whatever adds up is not from me, is from the evil. Jesus Christ was just equipping people to live in harmony between one another and also to show them the proper way of living in harmony with God. Because Jesus Christ said, by words we will be judged. By words, we will be justified or condemned. The words which we speak, the words which we receive, those are words they will judge us or they will condemn us 
or they will also just fire us. If you receive every day the word of God, you live according to the will of God and you have spared a life because you are feeding your soul to the, to the, to the word of God. But if you are not reading the Bible, you are not listening to the word of God, if you are not uh, reading about an uh, inspirational book of a faith, then you will be like, you will be what you are feeding on. People nowadays, they spend times on the television and uh, they spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time on uh, entertainment. And in entertainment, there is almost nothing. It is only to entertain people, but there is no food of the soul. That's why uh, Solomon said, it is better to come, to go somewhere, and to listen, to come into the house of God and to listen. Because if you do such a sacrifice, it is better than those who are singing in vain. Because those singing in vain, those entertaining themselves in vain, they do not know what they are doing. But whenever you go to church, you know what you are going to do. You went to listen to the word of God. You went to feed your soul uh, of the food from heaven, the fresh manna. And uh, you went also to increase your faith. And uh, faith come by hearing, hearing the word of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, here is the clue. By receiving the equipment of God's word, we get sanctified. Jesus Christ never ceases to sanctify people and uh, to tell people how to behave. One day, Peter asked Jesus, If my brother offends me, how much, how long shall I forgive him? Jesus Christ told him, You will forgive him seven times seven. Hallelujah. 70 times 7, which is many times, possible many times, possible many times. If your brother goes and he offends you and he comes back to you and he says, uh, forgive me, forgive me, I did this, I did wrong you. But forgive me. You forgive him. And he, he go back and he repeat the same thing. Or he repeat the other thing. Or he repeat the other thing. And he come back again. He ask you forgiveness. He goes out from you and he repeat another thing. There can be multiple. But whenever he has God to come back to you, and they say, forgive me because I did you wrong. You will forgive. Hallelujah. Forgive each other. Jesus Christ said, do not let anger abide in you. Because whoever hates a brother without cause, he is already a killer. In the word of God, Killing started by hating and hating without reason even. Hating. Whoever has a hate against his brother, he is already the killer. That's the origin of killing. Because of the sin also, by sinning, there is a first of all, or, or, of inoculation of sin and of growth of sin and of a result of sin. Whenever anything is committed, it is inoculation. 
Wherever any idea to harm is conceived, it is inoculation of sin. Now Satan will feed that desire inside, that hate, and he will increase the sin into someone, and that sin will grow up to the level it will give birth. And whenever now it gives birth, it is now the result. You hear, oh, such has been in fornication, such has been in killing, such has been in a uh, robbing, such uh, uh, has been uh, uh, guilt of a uh, false witness. Where those start? Uh, where, where those things start from? They start from inside, inside of the body. And they keep growing, and they keep growing. If you don't take care of it in uh, uh, timely, yes, there is some situation, there is some consequences, there is some result which are from our carelessness. We do have to care of ourselves to listen to the word of God and to act accordingly whenever then you offend and you go back to God and to the one you offended that's why Jesus Christ said forgive forgive because whatever you confess before God you are like you didn't do it hallelujah you are like you didn't do it and God forgive you and whenever also you do something else and you feel remorse of coming uh, and uh, repair it you are more more welcome to do so because you are in plan of God and God has a such plan for you to do so now danger with people they don't get in contact with God they don't listen to the direction of God they are careless they don't even take care of one time to think about themselves on what they are doing on what they are posing the act they are posing and uh, uh, the consequence well, that will be the consequences are bigger than we think and uh, we had already some examples. Those people of Ali, they began to play with sin. And uh, you know something with the Holy Ghost. If you keep sinning willfully, there is some nature coming to you. And uh, that nature is the nature of not feeling uh, guilty anymore. You begin to found it familiar some people killing is like familiar some people robbing is like familiar some people committing fornication is like familiar because of what they kept doing the same work the same work until it became like nature and uh, what those uh, things uh, which are not co confessed, which are not uh, repented, what they do to your body, they make you like uh, like uh, senseless. You don't have uh, the sense, you don't have uh, the remorse, you don't have the guilt anymore, and uh, you keep doing it like usual. That's uh, how Satan is robbing people of God and take them to hell because they are, they are not care careful of themselves they are not paying attention to themselves they are not examining themselves apostle paul said examine yourself examine examine yourself and repent Hallelujah. Whenever you come near the cup and uh, the body of Christ, the bread, the you have to examine yourself. 
not to eat the way you have to, but examine yourself and repent. Ask yourself of what you are doing and repent before God and look the face of God. God is there to forgive you. Sometimes in God's word it says, God is not slack in giving his promises or bringing the promises to, to pass, but it is our transgressions who makes who make us far away from our God. Now this way of sinning and sinning again, sinning and sinning again, that's the act which ends up by chasing the Holy Ghost away from us. We cannot then feel that love of God bringing us to repentance. Because of what? Because of doing repeatedly the same sin or the sin before God and without repeating, uh, repenting. But whenever we repent, we get reconciliation, reconciliation with God. We get our fellowship is established. And because also we are in this, this world of temptation, feel of temptation, whoever is guilty in such a thing, whenever he raises up and asks forgiveness to God and to people also, he receives forgiveness because God wants us to be such a way, to be holy every day, every minute, every second, because uh, there is plan for that. Hallelujah. Now, these people of Ali, they didn't take care of themselves and uh, they got destroyed. We said, first of all, the people of uh, Noah time, they got uh, destroyed very well, without mercy, because uh, they, they despised the mercy of God. God did whatever he could do. God led them to the good way. God tried to send the prophet who was Noah to teach them. Then Noah taught 120 years, which is the, the preaching of long-suffering of God the preaching of long-suffering of God. But that long-suffering preaching were, was uh, despised. And uh, they said, Noah, you are, you are becoming out of yourself. You are Noah no more. You are becoming old. You don't know what you meet with. When you say about a dream, about a vision, you don't know what you are saying. Since we were born, we didn't see rain. It did not rain at all. Now, where the rain will come from? And they began to despise. And they said, instead, we go back into our pleasure. You don't know where you are taking us, but we know where we are going. We are going to please ourselves. And uh, that way they were doing all type of evil. Fornications, adulteries, murderers, violence all the way. And also worship of idols. Worship of idols which made God to be fr frustrated of the action they were doing and decided to do something which will shake the world, which will baptize the world, which will wipe away a little the sin of the world. And yes, when they get destroyed, now the world was without sin again. It was uh, baptized. It was baptized, but also 
there was a remaining steps where it was now to be what? To be sanctified. Now to get baptized, there is some act we have to do. The act is to confess. Hallelujah. Confess what we, we do, what wrong we might have done in our lives, and to confess completely and then believe God for forgiveness. Hallelujah. But there is also some way of sanctification. The sanctification many times, it is from the word. Jesus Christ said to disciples, you are now sanctified by the word which I taught to you. The word which Jesus Christ taught to them was able to sanctify them until they have been sanctified completely in the word of God. Hallelujah. And after that phase, when Jesus Christ saw that uh, the sanctification through words has been done properly, there is such a time where he felt even to go. He felt even time to die in order to shed his blood which will remove the sin of the world, which will remove the curse of the sin, which will remove the consequence of a sin, which will be another sanctification to people who will be receiving the word of God, who will be repenting of their sin, who will be following the word and the will of God. That phase was very important. And that phase also was not important to the uh, people only, but to the earth God created. Sometimes God did something for a sign. When the blood of Jesus Christ was dripping on the earth, it was speaking something. It was speaking that from now the earth, I claim you. I redeem you. I redeem you. Because I sanctify you by my blood, now I claim you. You are mine. You are no more the property of the evil. We know that uh, somehow Satan gets dominion of uh, uh, the earth because of which way he got the dominion because he is a seducer he is a seducer he seduced the first couple and uh, through the person of a serpent he was able even uh, to have seed even to have seed. Now that seed was uh, the same way like uh, the seed of God. And uh, because it was a body and a spirit, yeah, that's where now evil were also allowed to live on the earth. But remember, the spirit was not good. The spirit was evil. That the acquired body was there. And there was no way God could do. They are all flesh and spirit, but different spirit. Some could have the spirit of God inside of them, and some could have the spirit of a devil inside of them and now there was enmity now when Jesus Christ uh, shed his blood on earth was to claim again the redemption even if redemption is not over yet but the earth has been claimed 
And as the children of God, we have that power inside of us. Wherever our foot gets, that place is possessed. That place is redeemed. Wherever you go in town, and uh, your your feet are on the ground of that town in this time if you are a servant of god you can claim that place because from that time on it is redeemed place redeemed place by what by jesus christ because we are the carrier of the spirit of Christ inside of us. And also we have the blood of Jesus Christ inside of us. The word of God we are receiving day and night. It is the word of God. Hallelujah. It is the word of God. It is the blood of God. And it is reconciliation. Our reconciliation to God. And now, whenever we are going, the Bible said, how beautiful are the feet of those who take the good news on the mountain, proclaiming that uh, your God, your God reneth, your God reneth, your God reneth, feet speaking, Fit speaking, fit having, like I can say, having the mouth and the tongue. Fit speaking. Whenever as the people of God we are uh, walking on uh, any places, that place is claimed. And uh, we have the right to say even if that, that place was before belonging to evil people, who are worshipping idols and so on, we have the right to go and to claim that place and say from this time on, this place is claimed. It does not belong to you anymore, devil, but it, uh, uh, it belongs to Jesus Christ uh, who sanctified the earth with his own blood. The blood of Jesus Christ sanctified us inside and out and uh, sanctified also the, the the earth it was on hallelujah and uh, that blood not sanctification uh, also uh, only but it had the power to to redeem us from any to redeem us from any trouble, to redeem us from any struggle, to redeem us from any curse, to redeem us from any sin. Because of what? Because we are the property of God. We are the people of God. We are sons and daughters of God. And we represent Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the way we present Jesus Christ, whenever we 